Good morning. We will continue today the actuator disk theory, hover flight, and we will try to derive the power that we needed in actuator disk theory for hovering flight. For the power calculation, we have to apply the conservation of energy. The energy down in the wake minus the energy up in the wake equals with the power. The energy up in the wake is zero as we are hovering and there is no velocity of the helicopter. Down in the wake, the flow is accelerated to twice the induced velocity at the level of the rotor. Therefore, the kinetic energy is 1 over 2 m dot, the mass flow rate, multiplied by twice vi squared. This has, be, this has to be equal with the power. On the other hand, the power is also thrust multiplied by the velocity, which is vi, induced velocity, at the level of the rotor. Then, making them this two relation equal and recalling the induced velocity in hover, as we derived in the previous course, we can deduce the formula of the power, which is weight multiplied by the squared of weight divided by 2 rho p r square. This is the so-called ideal power. The ideal power is the power that we need to carry a certain weight. However, there are losses in the real rotor due to non-uniformity of the induced velocity, the rotational velocity in the wake, and to profile drag force. As a result, we need more power for hovering than the ideal power. The figure of merit is defined as the ideal power for hover to the real power for hover. And it is a design parameter which shows the hover efficiency. It has the value between 0.6 to 0.8. Therefore, the power to hover is equal with 1 over figure of merit multiplied by ideal power. One can see that as the figure of merit is decreasing, the power is increasing. The figure of merit is 1 in an ideal rotor with no blade drag. For a good rotor, the figure of merit is 0.75. For a rotor designed for high speed, it is a, a figure of merit at 0.6. We have always to make a compromise between hover and high speed, and this results in a lower figure of merit. The power loading parameter is another design parameter. Dividing the power to hover from the previous formula by the weight, we obtained the formula that is given in this slide. Recall that the weight divided by the area of the rotor is the disk loading, which shows us that the power loading shows how much power we need to lift at a certain weight. How much weight can we lift for a given power? It is the opposite, the weight ratio divided by the power to hover. One can see that this depends on the figure of merit and on the disk loading. Representing the power loading variation with the disk loading, one can see the different trends of a helicopter. As the disk loading is increasing, so we have smaller rotors, the power loading is decreasing and one can lift less for a given power. The problem with a man-hovered helicopter is that we need a very high power loading. And in this way, 
sometimes is unachievable. There are different graphs in this figure according to the figure of merit considered, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 or 1. High disk loading affects not only the downwash velocity but also the power required to hover. The usual normal range of disk loading is in between of 7 and 10 pound per square feet. This result actually in lifting between 8 to 11 pound per horsepower. The human power helicopter competition is just ended. It took more than 30 years to build a human powered helicopter. The price was set in the 1980s and it was uh, meant to fly a human powered helicopter for at least 60 seconds and a height of 3 meters. The initial record was held by Japan Prof Professor Akira Naito with a four-prop aircraft that could hover at an altitude of 0 0.2 meters for more than 90 seconds. Only last year, in 2013, the human power was um, achieved with a helicopter for 60 seconds. It also used four rotors and it used the ground effect of the helicopter. The evolution of the power loading in 60 years, it has the following trend. One can see that the trend has been to decrease the power loading to improve the hover capabilities. There is a big change in the 50s in this power loading. This comes with the introduction of the turboshaft rotor. This ends my lecture on actuator disk theory power calculations.